Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So now let us look at the effect of humid air. Now for this you will, we will have to go back to our uh, class 11th and 12th chemistry in school. Some students hate this subject of chemistry. Okay. I was one of them when I was in school, but we have to use it. So <coughs> just recall some definitions about humidity. Okay. So what is humidity? It is an indication of how much vapor, water vapor is there in the ambient air. Okay. Interestingly, there are several definitions of humidity. So, we will revisit them very, very, very briefly. So, there is something called as absolute humidity, also called as the volumetric humidity. There you look at the mass of the water vapor upon the volume of the moist air. Moist air means air which has got water vapor in it. So, that is absolute humidity, how much mass of water vapor you have per volume. You also have something called as a specific humidity or mass humidity. This is mass upon mass. So, mass of water vapor upon mass of the moist air. Then you also have what is called as a humidity ratio or a mixing ratio, which is the ratio of mass of water vapor upon mass of dry air. So now you remove the you remove the mass of the water vapor, remaining thing is mass of dry air. So that ratio is called as humidity ratio, and most important for us is what is called as the RH or the relative humidity, which is mass of the water vapor divided by mass of the saturation water vapor. So does somebody remember from your school chemistry what is meant by saturation water vapor? After that, what happens? <laughs> Correct. It will condense into water or ice or sleet or you know hail, whatever, appropriate to the operating conditions. Correct. How much how much water vapor can air hold without condensing? That is called as the relative humidity. Normally, we express that as a percentage. Now, question is how do you measure it? So, this is something I want to leave it to you for Moodle. So, note down on Moodle page, tell us how the relative humidity is measured in real life. Yeah, there are many ways you will remember. I remember hot and wet bulb thermometer, thermometer then there is a hygrometer. Okay. Just to revive your memory and your old school days, on Moodle page I want, but please do not copy paste from some source and put it, apply your own mind, make it in a slightly interesting fashion, perhaps put a photograph of some instrument, give some numbers about RH values of various places, say Mumbai, how it varies, so some information about humidity because this is going to affect. Okay. So now let us look at some other physical concepts, concepts about saturation. So this is what we have already seen. Saturation is a condition in which any additional water vapor will not remain water vapor, it will condense into liquid. Okay. So, there is one confusion which many people have. Many people feel that this water vapor, these molecules of water will actually go inside the molecules of the gas and you know it is not true, there is no mixing. Okay. You cannot break Avogadro's law. You cannot. You cannot have intermolecular forces cannot be broken by some other particle unless you apply huge amount of energy. So the water vapor is just like any other gas. Just like air is a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen. There is also water vapor. Take it as a gas. So this water vapor is a gas which is there in the air like any other gas. It does not actually mix. Now, dew point is the temperature of the ambient air. If you cool the ambient air up to dew point, 
then saturation vapor pressure occurs and this will start condensing. So, when you operate any vehicle or an airship, if you operate at a temperature lower than dew point, the air will actually shed all its water vapor in the form of dew. So, at or below dew point, the relative humidity is 100 percent and above the dew point, it will be 80 percent, 90 percent, etcetera, etcetera, etcetera. So, there is an alternative way in which we can estimate RH. Now, you cannot go around and calculating, you cannot go around with a thermometer and checking the humidity at every point of time. Yes, you need that number, but there is an alternative way of measuring this and for that we again revisit our school chemistry and we look at two laws, the ideal gas law PV is equal to RT and we look at the Dalton's law of partial pressures. So, there is something called as the actual vapor pressure, we call it as small e, subscript e. This is the partial pressure of the water vapor in the atmosphere. You take a small uh, amount or let us say a unit volume of moist air. It consists of a mixture of many, many gases, homogeneous mixture of many, many gases. One of the gases, water vapor. And you know that mixture of gases in a container will exert their own pressures, we call it the partial pressure. So, the partial pressure of the water vapor in air is called as the actual vapor pressure. So, this is basically at now P s is the ambient pressure, please note I am not using P a, okay. because P a can be confused as pressure of the air and you might get mixed up saying air and water vapor, that is why we use S. So, subscript S will be used for something like a atmospheric condition instead of A. So, the pressure of the atmosphere is P s, it consists of many, many gases. So, every other gas other than water vapor, we could call it as dry air. All the nitrogen, oxygen, there are also traces of helium in the ambient air and so many other gases, all of it are clubbed as dry air and the partial pressure of that is called as P d a, dry air, d a for dry air and the partial pressure of water vapor is P w v. Now, why are we doing all this? We are doing all this because we want to use pressure volume relationship to figure out a numerical way to calculate the humidity. And water vapor will stay as water vapor as long as we have temperature above dew point. So, we need to also look at the concepts of relative humidity in that way. So, therefore, P s will be P of d a dry air partial pressure plus E. Okay? I hope this is clear. Although it may seem little bit uh, involved right now, but very soon we will use this to converge. Now, let us look at uh, a concept called as E s. E s is the saturation vapor pressure. This is what occurs atmosphere in nature. There is some saturation vapor pressure. The it is a partial not paper, but pressure of hydrogen at saturation. This is a mistake. I will correct this mistake. It is a partial pressure of hydrogen of water vapor at saturation. Beyond that, it will become fluid. So, what happens in this case is very interesting. The physical phenomena is extremely interesting. At this particular condition, the vapor phase in is equilibrium with liquid phase. So, both of them are happening simultaneously, anything below that. So, we know that the RH is going to be 100 percent when the T ambient is equal to dew point. Now, how do you calculate the saturation vapor pressure? It will change based on the temperature of the ambient air. So, for that, there is an Arden-Buck equation which relates the ambient air temperature in centigrades because we mostly measure in centigrades with directly it gives you the saturation vapor pressure. So, it is a slightly involved equation that is 6.1, into exponential of this 18.678 minus temperature in C upon 234 
etc., etc. The units of this are Pascals. Now, one can simplify this without much loss in accuracy and make it just like this. So, it is a simple formula now. So, 18.5 c upon 257 plus c, this is a raised to exponential times 611.2 in Pascals. So, obviously, when the value of c is 0, that means when the temperature of the ambient air is 0, E s will be 611.2, E power 0 is 1, correct. So, you can calculate the value of E s simply by noting down the ambient air temperature. Now, I was a bit curious when I was making these transparencies on how much error do we actually get in these two. So, what I did is I actually plotted this graph. So, the dark line is the approximate value and the points are the exact value. You can see there is hardly any difference. So, it is we can safely use the simple formula without much loss in accuracy. So, on the y axis we have the saturation vapor pressure, either you can call it as S V P or you can call it as E S, E subscript S. On the x axis we have and if you look at the ambient condition around 15 degrees centigrade, you have a saturation vapor of around 1700 or so. So, at 1700 Pascal ambient pressure, that will be the uh, value. Okay, so, now let us revisit two basic gas laws. And I must tell you, when I made this slide, I went back to my own old memories about the schools. So, Dalton gave us a law of partial pressures. Does anybody remember it? I could not recall it when I was making these slides. Yes. Yeah, yeah, one, one by one. Yeah. Yes, please tell me. What is the Dalton's law of pressure? Partial pressure. Partial pressure is exerted by each gas in is equal to the total pressure. Correct. Sum of the partial pressures. So, if you have, if you have a gas 1 and gas 2 at pressure P1 and P2, but same volume. Okay. So, now you mix them. It will become 2 times volume because there will be two volumes mixed, but then if you half it, you will find that the pressure of a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the pressure that the gas would exert separately if each occupied the same volume as the mixture. So, water vapor, nitrogen, oxygen, they will not all have the same pressure. Depending on their partial contributions, there will be partial pressures. There is also another interesting law called as the Amagat's law, this is for partial volumes. This does somebody remember this law? Yeah, this is not something that we really read. Okay. So, Amagat's law is a kind of a corollary to the Dalton's law of pressure. What Amagat's law says is that the volume of a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the volumes they would occupy when they are under the same pressure as the mixture. So, what we will do is we will use a combination of these two laws to try and get a numerical expression for calculating the effect of relative humidity or R h. So, we look at vapor pressure and R h. So, what we do is, so consider two kinds of situations. One is a situation in which the air is saturated with water vapor. So, it cannot take any more, any more water vapor, it will condense into water. And same temperature. So, gas law is P V equal to M R T. So, for unsaturated air, E into V will be, now I have, here I have not put E and V, E, e and I just put V as the volume. Okay. So, the because E is basically P pressure. So, the actual vapor pressure and actual partial masses, mass of the uh, water vapor and mass of the dry air. Now, just take a ratio. You take a ratio, you will get E by E s is equal to M V W by M s. 
okay and by definition 100 into mvw mass of the volume of the mass of the water vapor upon mass of the dry air that is defined as the saturation as the vapor pressure uh, sorry as the relative humidity rs so therefore e which is the vapor pressure of unsaturated air is equal to humidity as a percentage into the saturation vapor pressure now this is very nice because es is a number that you can calculate using that arden bucks formula for a given ambient temperature so the rhs is completely known rh is given by the atmospheric conditions okay rh is an input and e is the pressure that you require now what do we do with this e we are not dealing with the vapors we are dealing with the combined mixture 